Prime Minister Trudeau, one of the things that he did is declared a, a federal uh, holiday. September the 30th each year will be known as Truth and, Rec Truth and Reconciliation Day. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying that. Uh, your thoughts, first of all, uh, and Peter, I'll start with you on this, on the overall idea of this day and what it means and what it's meant to mean. Well, I think it's been long due to happen. Um, you know, I'm I'm the son of an immigrant, so we came to Canada to start a new life and uh, you know join the culture and things like that. Um, I've learned a lot of things over the past few years through my uh, wife. Well, my wife is Indigenous, if you guys didn't know that. Um, and I'm just shocked at the history of Canada and what our Indigenous people went through. And uh, yeah, there's <laughs> we have to start the reconciliation process. And there's a lot of energy, multi generational trauma that these people are suffering, you know. And I was just shocked. As the more I learn, the more I'm I'm shocked. And I just can't believe this happened here and it was swept under the rug. I know um, a few weeks back, my wife's vacation, we went to her her reserve, uh, Muncie, Delaware, and I'd like to say it was a nice reserve. It's not. It's it was a it was an example of how reserves cannot be the greatest places. Then we went to uh, the Seven Nations Reserve, which is a very affluent reserve. That's where the Stego cigarettes come from. And I just the difference between these two reserves, right? And um, there has to be a there has to be a better way. And maybe this is the beginning. That's all I can hope for. Linda, your thoughts on hearing when the day was announced that it would be a holiday? Well, I think it's, uh, as Peter said, I think uh, it's, you know, it's really brought to light the, um, what happened with the residential schools. And uh, I think um, it's really you know, making people realize um, what went on in the years gone by and how things were swept under the carpet. So, you know, and this was part of the Truth and Reconciliation Report. And it's about time that we were doing something like this, the nature of this. And I think it, you can see the number of, um, organizations and the number of people that are really getting involved and, and, and wanting to learn more, right? I think, I think the, the uh, learning this year about the number of children that uh, were lost at their residential schools, um, I mean, those things are shocking to us, right? So, um, you know, uh, the sins of the past are finally coming forward. And uh, I think it's really important we all learn about this and we understand and and I think it's uh, it's going to be a very important day, September 30th, and hopefully it will become a much bigger holiday in the future, but at least it's starting. So I think that's uh, very, very important. And Andrew, your initial thoughts? Um, I, I think it's a good idea. It's a good learning opportunity. The question is who and how will that opportunity be taken advantage of? Um, are we, you know, as municipalities, are we putting events together during the day so that we can learn about the truth and reconciliation process or about indigenous affairs uh what are we what are we utilizing this day as an opportunity for so you know as a day in itself okay maybe a bit of awareness but what are we talking about where are we coming from who's saying it uh, what information are we trying to get across? And those are big questions in my mind. And maybe it'll take a few years before we get there. I don't know. Uh, but hey, anything that we can do to raise awareness about the, the current affairs and the past uh, of the Indigenous people of Canada is good. And the fact that it's getting national attention I think is really important because we, we have to remember that we are a nation of many nations and we, we have to pay attention to that fact and each of those nations has their own needs and their own concerns and their own histories and they all have to be recognized and this is a great opportunity for that. Some of the recognition too is coming from uh, Northumberland County. They raised the uh, Every Child Matters uh, flag up at the county building in Coburg. Coburg is doing uh, other crosswalks. Uh, Brighton is doing uh, some work as well, some artwork uh, that's not going to be uh, walked on or driven on. That's uh, going to be taking place uh, this week. Uh, Peter, your thoughts, though, with that in mind? I mean, yes, it, it, they're great initiatives. Your thoughts, though, on if this is actually, is there going to be a real conversation in the average Canadian home about this? I think so. I mean, I know anytime uh, Layla and I are out, 
people ask her questions. There's a, been a lot more questions, more so in the past two months than there has ever been. And she'll stop and she will explain things. And that means a lot to her, right? Just that people are asking these questions, they're finding out, they're getting educated. I mean, the crosswalk in Coburg, uh, Kevin Ward actually reached out to Layla and said, hey, you know, they're doing this crosswalk in Orangeville. Maybe you should talk to council about that. So uh, Layla reached out to Nicole Beattie and then Nicole took it to council and lo and behold, it's something that's happening. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of conversations out there. This Thursday, um, there's the walk out in Alderville. I think it's at seven o'clock, seven thirty yes. at night. Yeah. Layla looks after that stuff for me, but we'll be out there. We'll be doing all that stuff. And that's to Andrew's point. Like there are some things happening. So I think all day long, there's some things going on in Alderville. And I think a lot of people are invited and public is expected to show. So go ahead, Lynn. Linda. Well, I think Andrew brought up a, a really good point though, is to, and not only the activities, but I think it, it's educating people more about this all. And is this something that's going to be brought up in the schools? And, uh, you know, when you're learning about the history of Canada, are we going to, make sure that people become more aware about this. And I think it will take a few years for people to get better educated, but I think that's a really important part of it is understanding and uh, this being um, a very open conversation about what went, what happened in the past. So I think- And yeah. it's not just kids that need to learn this in school. It's all of us, our age. Oh yeah, for sure, all of us nothing. as well. Like, yep. Like, yep. like what yep. Peter talked about, people coming up to Layla and asking her. Do you think the, there's a genuine conversation to be had this Thursday and will be had, Andrew? Yes, uh, there are several genuine conversations to be had. And I would really love the opportunity to speak to somebody like Peter's wife, Layla, to say, how do you feel about that day after it's happened? Do you feel like we've made some steps forward? Do you feel like there's been any progress? Because let's face it, I'm not in a position to really say. Um, I'm just... I'm just a white man, you know, um, what I what I want to know is, are we moving in the right direction as a nation? And, uh, and is the government moving in the right direction? So that will be the question I will want to ask people after the fact. There will be a lot of questions after the fact. Uh, I, I'm sure of that. What are your thoughts, though, on on this just being a federal holiday and the province of Ontario not uh, stepping up and recognizing the day as well. Peter, your thoughts on that? Well, let's hope that'll change. Uh, I mean, it was pretty quick that they brought it down the uh, down the pipe. So, I mean, are we happy about it not being an actual holiday holiday? Uh, no, but uh, I think that's going to change. I think there'll be a little bit of pressure after this year. That, and did you agree it's a more of a timing thing like it came about so fast no time to prepare to for the provincial government to do something yeah of course yeah i think that's probably one of the reasons it's not yet a holiday here was it did come down so fast but uh you know hopefully they'll think about that for next year and consider um and making it a provincial holiday so i mean there's implications with that but i'm hoping they will will do that but um you know i mean we're, we're going to see people are going to see a lot of things closed on thursday for sure because banks are closed and any federal regulated service is closed on thursday so yeah let's hope that uh, next year it will be a provincial holiday a lot of people are talking wondering if coburg and port hope are, are doing anything, do you have any organized events, anything to, to recognize the day? Peter, have you heard of anything? Uh, not that I know of. I know in Alderville, they have the walk and things like that, but in Coburg, I haven't heard of anything. Andrew, do you think something should be done, uh, organized by municipalities throughout, uh, well, the country for that matter, or should it be something that is more led by the reserves like Alderville in this area here? Oh, Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, honestly, I would love to see all municipalities have events led by people of nearby Indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. I think that would be amazing. I uh, would love to see drum circles. I would love to see powwows. I would love to see uh, presentations about the truth and reconciliation process. Because let's face it, how many of us actually know what's happening at the, the federal level in terms of truth and reconciliation? How many people are aware of what's going on? How many people are aware of it, how it affects our indigenous communities? Um, 
So I would be really interested in seeing things happening at the municipal level that are led by members of the Indigenous communities. Um, but I don't see any of that going on in Port Hope or Coburg yet. I haven't heard of anything. <clears throat> Your thoughts, Linda, on municipalities uh, holding their own events? I agree with Andrew. It would be nice if there was a partnership between the municipalities and our local reserve and uh, putting events on. Again, that's another way to educate people and, bring, and people be more aware all about the truth and reconciliation process. I think Andrew makes another good point, you know, what is happening in that in the area of that process too, right? I mean, that report came out a few years ago and where are we in the way of, and I mean, there's been lots of feedback that we haven't, we haven't moved the needle that far, right? So, you know, I think that's, that's the other side of that is uh, really learning more as to what is happening once that report came out and what has been happening. So, I mean, there's been a uh, increased awareness. There's no doubt about that, but what else is happening on the flip side? And I mean, you're learning even last week, I think there were reserve, there was a reserve after 25 years was finally not boiling water anymore. So, I mean, and that's a big issue for a lot of us. Like how come the reserves don't have clean water? So, but there's lots of other issues there as well. So, I mean, all this, all this needs to be looked at. Peter, let me ask you this. Is it necessary or would it be mean more if municipalities were to do something that they were absolutely involving the reserves in, in their areas? Or would it mean less if they just went and did something on their own? Who's that director of that, Dirk? That's for you. Oh, okay. Sorry, you glitched there for a second. I, I thought you sorry. said Linda. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, I don't think we should speak for that group. Um, they want to be heard, right? My wife wants to be heard. That's what she says. Uh, we ask and they can tell us what they, what they want and how to, how to proceed. The big thing for us is to listen, right? So many years we've said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You do this, you do that. You live here, you live there. Right now is a time that we listen and we consider. And then we then we act, right? So I think we need to give our Indigenous people more of a voice, more of a say in things. And then we have to listen to what they want and how they want us to proceed. I think that's the key to any of this. One of the things I've found in, in my experience is that, and this is mostly in talking with, with Chief Dave Mowat, is he's very open to being asked questions. There's no such thing as a wrong question. If you don't know, you don't know, ask, and, and it will be answered. Linda, I think that's a very important part of this is, is the conversation goes two ways, ask the questions and, and listen to the answers. No, I think uh, Peter made a very good point there. It's all about listening too, too many times. We, we decide what we're gonna do for, for, for a population rather than actually asking them what they need or what they want or listening to their situations, right? So I think that's very, very important. And I mean, Alderville is a great community partner. So, you know, it's great to uh, have the reserve there. And I think it's really important that we're engaging with them, but we're listening too, and we're asking questions so we can learn more. Andrew, your thoughts on the importance of actually of asking the questions, of, of, of admitting, and it's difficult sometimes to admit you just don't know or you don't understand, but the importance of, of, of putting those questions out there. Agreed. And that's why I said I don't really, I shouldn't have a say here. This is, you know, this is about uh, communities like ours saying, we want to know more. There are people here that want to learn. There are people here that want to listen. There are people that should listen. <laughs> um, and uh, this is a Truth and Reconciliation Day, I think is a great opportunity for people of the indigenous community to come forward and share their stories, tell us, teach us. So we can just listen and try to understand as best we can. You don't have to make decisions. We just need to un we just need to experience and absorb and listen, like Peter said. So right on the money, Peter. That's exactly what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe Truth and Reconciliation Day moving forward, maybe not this year because it did come down pretty quickly, but moving forward is a great opportunity to get in touch with that um, idea and just soak something in. 
Absolutely. An opportunity happened earlier in the summer too, uh, with to do just that. And that was on Canada Day. Peter, I'm going to get you to talk a little bit about what you witnessed in, in Alderville on Canada Day, because it's going to be much the same or similar uh, on Truth and Reconciliation Day when they do their events uh, that evening. Uh, talk to us just a little bit about what you experienced there and what that meant to you. Uh, well, I mean, on Canada Day, uh, we went to Alderville and we wore our orange shirts and York was there along with your your better half. <laughs> and uh, Chief Dave Mowat, he spoke to the, the group. Um, he spoke to all of us and we talked about Canada Day. We talked about those who served. We talked about the history and we talked about the missing children. And it was very powerful and it... it It just showed me how far we have to come. I mean, I was embarrassed that I didn't know any of these things. I didn't know what happened. I didn't know the history. I mean, I grew up here. I, you know, I went to the East High School. I went to, you know, I partied out in Roseneath and Alderville. And, you know, I went hunting and doing all those things with everybody out there. I didn't know any of the stuff that had happened in the history. And frankly, the bad things that had gone on for many years, how um, basically uh, a culture was wiped out in um, the name of civilizing people. So um, listening to all of that on Canada Day of all days, it made me, um, made me open my eyes to uh, see that maybe we're not that great and we, we have to do some things. What I found really interesting too is, and Dave is a very forthcoming, very honest man, like they don't know everything. Yeah. They don't have all the answers either. There's still a lot of research that has to be done uh, uh, from, from that standpoint as well, which is, which is really, it, it's interesting. And good to hear that too, that, that, that they're doing that. Uh, let's keep this conversation going uh, in, in future episodes and stuff, especially after uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day and, and how that uh, the effect that it has had. Uh, 